The small board computer movement is going strong, and with the recent release of the Raspberry Pi 2, it doesn't look if it's going to be losing any of its momentum. Now, the key thing about the Raspberry Pi 2, of course, was its price, it's $35. And there are many, many other SBCs out there, but none of them have really hit that price point. Though to be fair, some of them do offer more functionality. That's with the exception of Hard Kernel. Hard Kernel has a variety of different SBCs for sale, and one of them, the Odroid C1, also costs just $35. It comes with a quad-core Cortex-A5 CPU, a Mali 450 GPU, and one gig of memory. Well, I've got hold of one, so let's have a look at it. So let's take a look at the Odroid C1 board. As you can see, it's small and compact like other single board computers that are available on the market. Here in the middle, we have the quad core processor, which is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. There's one gigabyte of RAM. Here at the back, we have the 40 GPIO pins. Here are four USB ports, gigabit ethernet port, micro HDMI, micro USB. Here's the power connector, a serial connector. Here is the battery backup socket for the real-time clock, and here is an infrared uh, receiver. Now, if we flip the board over on the other side, here we can see that the board has its SD card reader at the very bottom. Also below that, you'll see the connector for the eMMC module. Now, eMMC modules are about two or three times faster than SD card, and it's an option for the Odroid C1. Now, because this card is here in the middle, it does seem that all of the weight is taken on that reader. And as you can see, the board does wobble slightly, okay, because it isn't flat along the bottom. Now, that is a bit worrying for me, but I suppose if I bought a case, that would solve all the problems. Now, just talking about the power connector here, this is how the board is powered. It's not powered through the micro USB port. It's powered through a more conventional socket. You can buy an external power supply, or the option I went with was this external cable, which is a USB cable, and then it has the right connector at this end for the uh, board. So here we can see with the connector plugged in and the USB port at the other end, I would then connect into a phone charger to get the board running. As you may guess from the droid part of Odroid, Hard Kernel's range of SBCs were originally designed to run Android. This means that the Odroid C1 support for Android is excellent. The current officially supplied version of Android is Android 4.4 KitKat. Like other SBCs which support Android, the device boots up to the standard home screen using a HDMI TV or monitor. Use the mouse instead of your finger and click instead of tap. You can also add a USB keyboard. The default installation comes with a few hard kernel specific apps. Odroid Utility, which is used to set the screen resolution. Clockwork Mod Super User, because the supplied build of Android is rooted by default. A terminal emulator, Kodi and Dice Player. Unfortunately, you don't get Google Play or any of Google's services. However, the good news is that Google's apps can be unofficially sideloaded using instructions which you'll find in Odroid's community forums. In terms of performance, the quad-core Cortex-A5 isn't going to win any speed competitions when pitched against the latest generation of quad-core or octa-core processors which we find in today's flagship smartphones. However, that doesn't mean that the processor is any way slow or an underperformer, especially when you remember that these boards are designed primarily as embedded solutions. Quickly looking at some benchmarks, the Odroid C1 scored 15,887 on Antutu and managed a frame rate of 27.2 frames per second on Epic Citadel. Both these scores are for full HD. Because the board can be configured to run in several different screen resolutions, it means that the board's scores will vary depending on the set resolution. With a smaller screen resolution, the GPU has less work to do, and as a result, Antutu and Epic Citadel will perform better. At 720p, the C1 scored 17,682 on Antutu and married a frame rate of 51.5 on Epic Citadel. Clearly a big difference from the full HD scores. Unlike some builds of Android which I've seen on other SBCs, Android on the Odroid recognises USB flash drives without any problem. This means you can insert a flash disk and then watch videos or listen to music stored on that flash drive. I was able to play videos via the pre-installed dice player as well as via VLC. Oddly, the build of Kodi, which comes pre-installed, wasn't able to access the USB drive due to a permissions error. In terms of video decoding performance, I tested the C1 with my ZTE Star 2 review video, which is rendered at full HD at 14.7 megabits a second. 
the C1 was able to show the video without any problems. I also tested the Odroid C1 using YouTube and Netflix, both again which ran without any problems. Overall the Android experience is excellent, especially when you consider that this is a $35 device. Now as you would expect, the Odroid C1 supports more than just Android, you can also run Linux on it. Now Hardcone will provide an official build of Ubuntu 14.04 running the LXDE lightweight desktop and it's been really quite impressive and great using Linux on this small board. All of the default apps are installed that you would need including Mozilla and Chromium and GIMP and of course there are always the online repositories if you want to install other programs and other packages. The Odroid C1 uses a quad-core Cortex-A5 CPU clocked at 1.5 GHz. The Raspberry Pi uses a quad-core Cortex-A7 processor but clocked only 900 MHz. Even from a MHz point of view you can see that the Odroid C1 is going to be faster than the Raspberry Pi 2. Now I did some testing using OpenSSL and that tests just the CPU performance, not the CPU and GPU performance, but just alone on CPU performance the benchmark showed me that the Odroid C1 is almost twice as fast as the Raspberry Pi 2. The Kodia Media Player is installed by default and unlike its Android counterpart this version had no problem accessing the flash drives. That means if you wanted to use this board as a media player with Kodi then it might be better to do it under Linux than under Android. And there we have it, the Odroid C1. Now the question is does the Odroid C1 provide a real alternative to the Raspberry Pi 2? And I think it does. Of course the Raspberry Pi community is enormous, there are so many videos and tutorials and books and projects out there you can do, it's quite amazing. But the Odroid community is also growing and Hardcone will make sure all the tools are available that you need to fully use the board, including all of the source code. Also the board does have a few advantages over the Raspberry Pi 2. For example it has gigabit ethernet, it has the optional use of the eMMC module and I reckon it offers about two times the performance. All this at exactly the same price as the Raspberry Pi. Well my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave your comments below and tell me what you think about the Odroid C1. Also don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel and as for me I'll see you in my next video.